Hello everyone. You're all probably tuned in because you're pretty soon going to make a pretty big choice in your life. And that probably stresses you out. And just like I did, um, you look around everywhere and you're trying to figure out what you want to do. Now you probably feel like that choice might determine your job later, it might determine your salary, it might determine what con uh, company you're going to work for and what sector. Now, I'm here today to talk about the student team that I joined uh, over the past year. And besides that, I also want to tell you that, yes, the choice of study does have a big impact on what you're going to be doing later on, but it doesn't determine it. It's uh, what determines what you're going to be doing later on is how you develop yourself. So hello, my name is Jochem de Bocht. I am 21 years old and I'm a, a mechanical engineering student. And in the past year, I uh, joined the student team Electric Superbike Twente. Now here I was, I was 18 years old. I am from uh, Enschede myself. Um, and back then I also had to make a choice of what I wanted to study. Um, and I didn't really know. I knew that I liked math a bit I like physics a bit. I didn't really consider myself as a real engineer, I would say. Um, I, didn't, I didn't mind any other subjects. So yeah, I, I wasn't too sure. I didn't really want to stay in Enschede per se. I was open to going anywhere else. So I went looking around. I visited a lot of universities, um, even visited psychology, which is very different from mechanical engineering, what I chose at the end. Um, and yeah, as I said, at the end, I did go for mechanical engineering. Um, to me, it felt like that would give me a solid technological base um, from which I could develop myself further. So I went studying. I did that for two years. Um, I enjoyed it. I didn't enjoy some of it, of course. Um, yeah, it's pretty challenging at times. Um, but yeah, at, after two years of studying, I felt like there was other sides of myself that I wanted to develop. And I didn't really know how to yet. Um, I also wanted to get out of the books and do something a little bit more practical and um, develop myself, um, my skills that didn't really have to do with studying, but yeah, outside of that. So how did I want to develop myself? Well, I wanted to get to know companies. I wanted to know how they work, uh, what kind of people work for, work com for what companies. I wanted to know uh, what sectors there are, um, how organized and perfect or chaotic and a bit of a mess companies can be sometimes. Yeah, and I just wanted to you know, get to know them, talk to them a bit. I also wanted to um, le learn a little bit more about finance. Um, mechanical engineering is, is very technical, of course. Um, doesn't really have to do anything with finance. So I wanted to know, get to know a bit better what the worth is of money, um, how to spend money, um, what to spend it on. Um, yeah, so I wanted to get to know a bit more about that. Um, besides that, I had never, ever, ever negotiated in my life, not even on the market, um, which, yeah, I, I just wanted to learn that. I wanted to, um, you know, sit with a company at a table, negotiate about pricing, about money. Um, and last but not least, uh, what I was kind of missing in mechanical engineering, the bachelor, uh, was actually making something. So I wanted to actually produce something, uh, something cool. And uh, yeah, to do all of that, I joined Electric Superbike Twente uh, for a full year, for full time. And coming back to what I started uh, this with, uh, with how your choice of study doesn't determine everything, our team consists of a wide range of studies. We have computer science, mechanical engineering, industrial design engineering. We have basically everything. And a fun fact about our team, nobody had a motorcycle license at the beginning of the year, and still no one has one. Two are busy with getting their, theirs, but no one has theirs. So we're, we were with 14 students. Um, we work full-time, so from nine to five every day. Um, and everyone just takes basically a gap year from their studies. And uh, yeah, we were really excited to, uh, to get to work. Um, so what is Electric Soup Bike Twente? Um, the vision of Electric Soup Bike Twente is to make uh, s sustainable transportation cool and spectacular and show that to the world. 
And because we all know that sustainable transportation is, you know, it's good for the planet and stuff, but you need it to be cool. You, you need it to, you know, you, you need to want to buy it uh, to actually make it uh, something normal. Just like, every, just like, you know, Tesla is doing, Tesla is making really nice cars. Uh, people are really liking how they, how they drive, uh, how they look, and people want to buy that. So, yeah, we, need to do, we wanted to do the same thing in the electric motorcycle industry. Now, the uh, motorcycle industry was lagging behind, lagging behind, and that had a couple of reasons. One of them is that uh, most motorcycle riders are petrol heads, as we call them, and they're not too open uh, most of the time for electric uh, mobility, for electric motorcycles. They want the noise, uh, you know, and this is sensation. Um, second reason is a bit more technical. Uh, you have a lot less space in an, an electric motorcycle. Um, and you need a very big battery pack to be able to go very far with a motorcycle. Um, weight distribution is essential for the experience of driving a motorcycle. Um, so that was a big challenge and that was part of the reason why the industry was still lagging behind. Now in 2017, the team started, the very first team started, um, and they created this motorcycle, the Lion GP, it's called, uh, within a year. And they competed in a series called the Moto E. Now everyone knows Formula One, and now there's Formula E, there's Moto GP, and there's the Moto E. Now this um, class started in 2017, um, and we competed in it in 2018. In 2017 and 2018, it was still an open prototype class, so everyone with an electric motorcycle could join. And in the very first year that we joined, 2018, we actually became champions of it, which is great. Um, now, unfortunately, there's only one supplier of electric motorcycles that joins Moto E, so we can't join it anymore. Um, but yeah, we had started off. So, in the following year, after that, a second team started and they created this, the Eclipse GP. A uh, wonderful looking motorcycle and this was more focused on power, on great top speed and just going as fast as possible. Uh, this had a much bigger battery pack, a stronger electromotor, um, which, was, which was very exciting. But we did learn from it. We learned that uh, going from, for a high top speed means uh, that in our case, the driving dynamics were not as great as, as we wanted. And also it turned out too long, which infected uh, the driver dynamics. Um, so we had the first bike that I just showed you, the Lion. We had the second bike, the Eclipse. Now the Lion uh, focused on reliability and the second one on power. So we thought, what are we gonna focus on, on a, as, our, as a third team? Because we were the third team. And we decided to focus on making a lightweight and agile uh, motorcycle. So where do we start off? Well, we start off from scratch. Um, we just start off with uh, making several layouts of components of the motorcycle. We can, do, we can basically just do everything we like. Um, so yeah, you, you start off playing with that, seeing how it influences the um, center of mass, for example, which is very essential. And then we start designing the components. Now you might, uh, you might wonder, what do we design and what do we not make ourselves? Well, the things that we design are a lot uh, and make. We make the swing arm, which you see at the, on the right there. It connects the electromotor with the rear wheel. We also make the frame, the main frame, the battery pack, the electromotor, um, and the software and all the electron electronic parts, of course. Besides that, we also made a part of the bodywork. Um, wheels, front forks, brakes, those standard components we just took, took from existing motorcycles. So as the design goes on and on and on, um, we get more and more complicated. An electric motor, for example, is very complicated. Uh, mechanically seen and electrically seen, it's a very exciting piece of, uh, of a component. Um, so this was designed by ourselves in cooperation with, an, uh, with a company that helped us making it and doing some simulations on it. And as you can see, um, it's a very complex part. 
um, but never the more of a nevertheless it's very exciting um, and of course at the end we also have to make it so we make the production drawings and then we got to start looking for uh, companies that want to actually make this part so production here you see an engineer making the electric motor the electric motor of ours produces 120 kilowatts which uh, is equal to around 160 horsepower which is uh, quite a bit for, an, for a motorcycle. Uh, you see the frame being welded. Um, this frame is, so it's our design, and we, uh, we got a welder to weld it, uh, which was very exciting to see. And uh, what do you have here? The battery pack. Uh, the battery pack is a very interesting uh, component of ours. Um, we have 495 battery cells in it, uh, lithium polymer, and um, in total, they produce 700 volts and 200 amperes, which is a lot. It's a lot of power, um, and it's also very dangerous, so we have to be very careful. Um, it's also very complex to integrate it very safely and reliably, uh, but as you can see, it looks very organized, um, and we think that we've done a pretty, pretty good job. Uh, what is also important is that, you know, say if it falls, the motorcycle or crashes, um, the battery pack needs to be very safe and you know, it needs to stay intact. So the casing you see around the battery pack is impact resistant. Uh, so yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, and this is, uh, this is during production. We designed the electric motorcycle within three months, which is pretty short, and uh, actually made it within around four to five months, which was uh, it's stressful and challenging, but we managed to do it, to do it in the end. Um, so yeah, here you see the skeleton with more, uh, pretty much all the components inside. Um, we have a software engineer that actually makes the entire software for the bike. Um, as you can see, there are a lot of cables. It's a very complicated piece of machine. Uh, it's not easy to make it or to design the software for it. Um, yeah, very complicated. Um, the cables you see, it's a lot of data cables. Um, some high power, some, some low power. Um, yeah, very complicated. So in May of 2020, we finally revealed the Apex RS, is what, is what it's called. Uh, we were very proud to reveal it, because uh, you know, even though there was corona, we still managed to complete it. Uh, we were very happy with that. Um, so yeah, we took some beautiful pictures, um, some specifications. It will go up to 100 kilometers per hour within, we hope, uh, three seconds. Um, top speed of 250 kilometers per hour. Battery pack has a capacity of 13.2 kilowatt hours. Um, yeah, and it weighs around 212 kilos, uh, which is pretty, um, you know, that's quite a bit for a motorcycle, but our battery pack already weighs 83 kilos, which is a lot to uh, compare to, for example, an internal combustion engine. So in, um, at the end of Ju July, uh, Corona had hit Holland, of course. Um, all our races were uh, canceled, um, unfortunately. But we did finish uh, the, the, uh, the Apex RS at the end. Um, and we uh, drove it on a parking lot here at the university. And as you can see, it looks great. We were very excited. Uh, it did quite well, actually. Uh, the rider said that it, it drove very nicely. Um, yeah, we couldn't be more proud to show you these pictures. So for next year, we have some races planned, of course. Um, in 2021, in May, uh, we want to visit the Farselring in Hengelo, Gelderland. Um, some of you may know it. It's a pretty big event. It's quite close to, close to Enschede, um, which is, that will be in May. Then in July, we hope to go to Finland to race against a university there, and hopefully also against Delft, because that's always you know, great uh, rivalry. Um, and then in August, we hope to go to Bermuda, Bermuda Charge, where they will host the very first ever uh, World Championship of electric uh, motorcycles. Um, so yeah, we're very eager to see how that's gonna turn out. Uh, we can't wait to see it and uh, go there. It's a beautiful island. So uh, my job, my job, as I said, I wanted to develop myself further 
in negotiating and getting to know companies. So I took on the uh, function of communications manager. Now, in my case, that meant that I basically uh, was part of the management team. Uh, and next to that, I was responsible for the money coming in and also sponsored parts. So that meant a lot of contact with companies. Um, that meant everything from calling the company uh, from when we didn't even know them or didn't know anyone, all the way to visiting the company and uh, closing the contracts. Um, this is, it was very new to me and I really enjoyed it. The thing I didn't enjoy was calling the companies without knowing them, but visiting, visiting the companies was, yeah, it was just great. Um, I have two, uh, two photos here, two examples of two companies that I'll just uh, shortly highlight. On the left, you see uh, someone from Helu Kabel. And Helu Kabel is a cable manufacturer from Germany. And in the previous two years, we had found out that cables were actually turning out to be really expensive, way more expensive than we actually wanted. Um, that is because there are a lot of connectors you have to get from everywhere. There's always shipping costs involved. And it's really hard to get the right length of cable. So you always need to order more, which makes it very expensive. So um, I found a uh, cable manufacturer and I called them and we had some meetings. And in the end, they decided to sponsor all our, all our cables that go into the new motorcycle for free and also financially support us a bit. So that's a great uh, uh, cooperation. Uh, it turned out really great, no cable costs and uh, they were on time always. On the right, you see PCV Group. This is a um, Enschede, of, a company from Enschede. They are an engineering consultancy and they're always looking for uh, uh, people, uh, students that are about to finish their studies. And so with cooperating with us, they, uh, they sort of get their name known among students and that's why they wanted to sponsor us, help us with designing the superbike. And yeah, this was a very interactive, uh, fun partnership. Uh, what I also wanted to highlight and what I've uh, really learned over the past year also is that it's really important to just have fun. Uh, you know, with 14 people working from nine to five, five days a week, uh, you get to know them very well, very soon. Um, yeah, and having fun and staying motivated because you, you know, you enjoy working with each other, that really helps you get through, let's say, Corona or other setbacks. Because there are always going to be a lot of setbacks. Um, but yeah, you just got to stick, stick with it, stick with the team and go through. So yeah, this was my presentation. Thank you.